Hello and welcome to our Theopop expert session, How to Patreon. My name is Ronnie Krieger, I'm the general manager for Patreon in Europe and my colleague Sarah and I, we will tell you a little bit more about what Patreon is and how you can use Patreon to monetize your art and creative process directly with your communities. Um, Patreon was started by a musician named Jack Conti, who was extremely frustrated with the current platforms and wanted to create um, a more creator-friendly platform. Um, it was based, or is still based, in America and had relatively quickly developed to a global platform with creators all over the world. Um, late last year, we started to talk about how Patreon could come to Europe and well, how that could look like and how we can um, yeah, basically build a team over here to make Patreon more creator friendly for the creators here in the region. And that's when Sarah joined our team in March and uh, is responsible for the creator relationships in Germany and the GSA region. And I'll hand over to Sarah to tell you a little bit more about what we do. Thank you, Ronnie. And yeah, I'm so excited to be here today. Thank you all for joining us wherever you're tuning in. So um, yeah, Ronnie introduced us already, but I'm going to show you what's on the agenda for today. And first, there's going to be a little introduction. We're going to look at why mem membership, creators who choose to work with us. We're going to look at how to Patreon, how to launch some of the considerations. And then finally, we're going to look at different success models from creatives from all kinds of fields. And if you want to join us afterwards for a little Q&A session, please feel free to do so. We're going to happily answer all the questions that you're going to have. So to get started with this presentation, I'm not only standing in front of you as someone from Patreon, but I'm also a visual artist myself, and I'm a big lover of the internet. And I know from experience, my experiences in the industry, that it's an extremely tough road to be on, to turn your passion into a creative career, into a career that is financially rewarding. It's a lot of ups and downs, it's endless failing, it's trying things and they don't work, it's uh, believing in your vision really, when no one else is. And, um, but if you burn for something, if you have a passion for something, this can also be the most rewarding thing ever. Because with your art, with your vision, you can turn the world upside down. And I personally, but also professionally, care about getting creators paid. I want artists to sustain their own lives. And um, going through this presentation, I want you to keep the three following points in mind. The first one is, the world needs art. And we need art more than ever. If you are a cre creative <laughs> in any way, you are desperately needed in today's world. Because what you create will define this era. What you create challenges us, makes us look at the world through a different set of eyes, makes us change um, perspective, and we badly need those perspectives. Art is everything, and we need to change the way creativity is valued. Fans want a unique connection to creators, not only their creation. And by that, I mean that we have perfectly monetized end products. You can go to a store, you can buy a artwork or whatever it is you want to <laughs> consume. But what about the creator behind? What about the creative journey? Because the people who care what you're doing also want to support you and be taken on that journey with you. I mean, especially in times like these. The system for creative people is broken. And what I mean by that is that the internet has given us um, a widely inspiring place. It has democratized access to distribution, um, ideas, audiences. It has offered so many opportunities for creators of all kinds. It promised to completely change the game, but something went wrong along the way. And you know, artists have built massive followings themselves, but it's actually big distribution platforms like YouTube or Spotify 
identify that benefit from those work of their create of the creators because um advertise it's an advertising fueled system and um, they pay out micro sums and that's not the way we can go forward and i think membership is definitely a way how we can move forward yeah and if you look specifically at the leaders in this field uh without suggesting bad intent the majority of creators who use these platforms cannot make a living from the money that they generate there. And a great example was when uh, COVID-19 impacted so many people uh, with the first lockdown. And not only musicians, but anyone who would normally tour, like a comedian, etc. Even people who are making their money as influencers from ad revenue at platforms like YouTube and others uh, were deeply impacted by it and all of a sudden realized that they have to depend on that just that one revenue stream. It's pretty much impossible for the majority of all creators in the world. That's when especially platforms like Patreon and membership become even more important today. Yeah, that's a valid point. And um, yeah, I think we're, we're tired of uh, seeing creators getting screwed by a broken system that doesn't value their work. And um, what we say is, fuck that. <laughs> Let's put creativity over everything. Because they're your ideas. It's your work that captivates audiences, inspires conversations, and builds community. And it's time to ditch the old ways. Let your fans give you the freedom and stability that you need to do your best creative work. So what is Patreon? How does it work? Well, basically, Patreon powers membership for creators and their most passionate fans. It's a value exchange. On Patreon, artists can let their fans become active, in, active participants in their work they love by offering them a monthly membership. And in exchange, creatives get that freedom um, they need to do their best creative work and also stability because financial freedom is creative freedom. Um, you can plan ahead, you can make all those things that you always wanted to do. And also it's not just a one-time project that is funded with a certain sum, but this can go on forever or a very long time. <laughs> so why membership? Um, well, basically, you can look at it as the modern-day fan club. I mean, we had fan clubs um, when you were young, <laughs> um, way back. So this is basically the digital version of it, um, where you own the relationship from to your um, to your community. You're free of all the middlemen. You're free of agents, managers, and it's also ad-free and it's free from any algorithm. You have a reliable income, a recurring income every month, um, and you can plan ahead with this one. You can uh, build a sustainable business, really, because you can plan ahead. You can do things that you always wanted to do um, and also invest in your future career. So why do creators choose to work with us? Um, and I think that's um, because we help you identify your most engaged fans. 100% of the posts that you're gonna uh, post on Patreon are gonna be delivered 100% to your community. We give you an amazing tool and an infrastructure where you can really create what you want to do and that fits best to your personal um, options. We're also membership experts, so that means we care about creators and we are in this with you. And um, later we're going to also give you our email address, so please get in touch with us and we're really going to help everyone individually uh, work out a plan and um, be on the journey with you because I think sometimes it's important that you have someone by your side. And we all also only succeed when you succeed. That means there are no upfront, un, uh, bl upfront costs. We have um, the lowest platform fees in the industry. 
so yeah, let's look at the company we keep. And I think, as you can see, we have really diverse creators from Judith Holofernes to Issa Rae, Hazel and Thomas, Aka Leusch. And I think what is important to add is that we have YouTubers, we have visual artists, we have, we have musicians. Uh, we even have a guy that builds underwater worlds for hamsters. So um, many use the platform in different ways and it's really up to you to decide how you want to structure this, how you want to, what, what you want to turn this into. Um, and we're later going to look a bit at the tiers and structures and how that can actually look. A few numbers um, that I'm quickly going to dive into. So we have 200k creators and we're constantly growing and this is backed by 6 million patrons um, and by today um, creators have earned 2 billion dollars which is a big amount of money if you think about it and with that money creatives could um, really follow their creative part and that at the end of the day it's what it's about. Um, we're also continuously working on improving our services so by the end of this year we're gonna have five website languages we already launched with uh, German, French, um, the next week Italian and Spanish is going to come. So yeah, this is something that is continuously developing also with your feedback and all the things that creators tell us. And not only do we have the languages, we also have a team in Berlin. Sarah is the Creative Partnerships Manager for Germany and the GSA region, but we also have people for French for Spanish Italian that know the markets and the creators in those landscapes and are there to uh, have conversations with creators in their native languages. Yeah. So how has Patreon actually already impacted creatives? Um, and I think this is an important point because, um, yeah, if you hear it from the creator themselves, this is um, super interesting and we're going to start off with while She Sleeps, a British metalcore band from Sheffield. Uh, they were formed in 2006, so they've been around a bit. Um, and what they say is that uh, with the monthly support of our fans, the band will be able to break free from the traditional music industry method of cash advances, where artists are essentially borrowing large sums of money and giving up the rights to their songs only to spend the years that follow in debt, which oftentimes becomes insurmountable and crippling. Yeah, and this particular example of a band was just, uh, everybody at the company absolutely loved it. It's a perfectly executed launch of a Patreon campaign. They've done a wonderful video announcement, which I encourage you all to, to see and watch and learn because it was just brilliantly executed. Uh, within l less than, I believe, four hours, they cracked a thousand patrons, and within their first 24 hours, they were at uh, almost 2,000 patrons and are now well over 2,000 patrons and supporters, which is a massive success for the band and will be uh, a, a financial uh, stability for them that they probably never had in their career before. Um. Yeah. And um, next is Zola Jesus, a US singer, songwriter, record producer. And she says that having been around for about 10 years now, I've been trying to get creative. I want to do this for the rest of my life. So how can I make that in a way that's sustainable, maintains my independence and my uncompromising path? Yeah, I'm, I'm personally a fan of Solar Jesus. I'm also a patron of Solar Jesus. And I think this uh, example of an artist is specifically interesting in the following regard. She had uh, been working on an album for quite some time. And when the album was finished, she realized she wasn't happy with the result. In the normal system where you have an agreement with your uh, record label and you have an advance possibly and you have a deadline etc go tell your record label that you're going to start all over and that they're going to have to wait an indefinite amount of time again to get that album that they've been banking on and have been paying you for at least in advance and in her case uh, it was a very transparent and open process and she shared that with her patrons and she was saying look I'm, I'm not happy I need to 
pivot, I need to start over, I need to see where I want to be, this just doesn't feel right. And she received an incredible amount of support from her patrons, encouraging her to take the time that she needs because these are all hardcore fans of her and if it takes longer that's fine because they all want her to create the best work to date. And I think this is a brilliant example of how a relationship directly with your community can be really um, beneficial for creative freedom. Yeah, definitely. Um, the next uh, artist we're going to look at is Gary Newman, um, another UK singer, songwriter, composer, really an artist through and through. And he says that social media is great. It can offer things that are valuable and informative, but it's like having a beautiful garden with no fence. Anyone can just wander in, start trouble, cause damage and then leave. I want to build something that is more exclusive, where only real fans come in and where you get something you just can't get anywhere else. And I think that's a really good point because Patreon on Patreon, the content is behind a paywall. That means all the trolls <laughs> will not be there, all the people that talk shit on the internet. Um, this is really for your super fans, for your community, and um, you have a very intimate and direct approach to them if that's what you want to do on Patreon. Yeah, I, I also follow uh, Gary Newman. I haven't really been personally a big fan of his early works, but I really like the stuff he's done uh, recently in the last couple of uh, years, which is kind of rare for an artist who's uh, around for such a long time. And he's very open on social media platforms about everything, the creative process, also his family, and um, gives you a pretty good insight. And what naturally happens on all the social media platforms, if you open up that much, is that you're confronted with a lot of haters and stupid comments, etc. And I think, you know, Patreon in this regard really allows him to do the same things he's done before, maybe even more open, but be free of all that nonsense and negative uh, negativity that comes to you t uh, towards uh, on social media platforms. And it doesn't even have to be many people. Like if you have a threat going on, if you have a conversation going on, and it might just be one or two people, it can really um, damage the whole situation for everyone involved. And you don't have that at Patreon, as Sarah said. Yeah. Um, yeah, and next we're going to talk a bit about um, how does page, how does it work uh, if you're thinking of starting a page. Um, and I have a lot of uh, creatives asking me, um, I want to start a page on what should I do? And I always say, um, this doesn't need to be another big project of yours. It can really be an extension of what you're already doing. So if you're producing content daily, um, you can just um, continue doing that. But if you invest a lot of time, invest a lot of resources, you maybe want to dif differentiate what kind of content you want to put out for free for everyone to see and which content should be exclusively for your hardcore community, your fans. Um, and yeah, moving forward, I think it's always best to pick a launch date, think about a certain time um, where you want to start this, because that's, that always gives you something to work towards to, and um, give, gives you a timeline. Um, and next, you basically select benefits and tiers, and here you can think about um, what kind of extra value are my fans looking for. What you also could do is, already before you start a Patreon, ask your community what would they be interested in, what are things they are, want to particularly see, or is it behind the scenes, bonus content, is it tutorials, um, really uh, be in contact with your fan base and then try to start it. Um, also, uh, start small. <laughs> As with almost everything in life, um, don't overdo it, start small. That always gives you the possibility to build up on it and it also um, doesn't make you feel overwhelmed by the work because remember, this is a long-term thing. It is not a, um, a crowdfunding campaign. It is not something that is one time, but it's really something that goes on um, quite long. And um, yeah, build a marketing strategy and if you are unsure about how you should start this, you can always get in touch with us and we're going to help you with all those initial steps, but we're also going to be by your side um, the, f the next months, the next years. Um, we're really going to help you because a Patreon page is not something that you set up once and then it's set in stone, but it's really something that develops just like your 
creative career, maybe you have weeks where there's more going on, weeks there's where's less going on, etc. Um, and it also needs to uh, develop with you. Yeah, and basically come up with a fulfillment plan. I think uh, planning is important. <laughs> I know a lot of creatives, this is hard, but um, yeah, really make a plan because at the end of the day, it makes it's so much easier for you to, um, if you have a content plan, for example, and you have um, things going on in your life and you, you really have things planned, that way it's super easy to um, add something or remove something, but you have that structure. Yeah, and it can be as simple as putting a reoccurring date in your calendar of like I'm blocking this one hour every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Uh, and that's when I'm going to work on my Patreon page. Yeah. So let's look at different success models of creatives from all kinds of fields. And um, yeah, I think most of you may know MIA. She's a singer, songwriter, record producer, visual artist, activist. And um, MIA is on Patreon because she makes so much stuff and records so many things that aren't music and, and that don't fit on other, other platforms. So she also really wants to use her subscription money to feed back into her Patreon community. And by that, she, uh, it, it, that means that she's going to um, support upcoming artists, she's going to do exhibitions, um, yeah, even build something with her Patreon community together. And um, she doesn't just want to be an influencer, but she wants to be a truth dispenser. And yeah, for example, she's, she, when she's uh, back to being able to travel, she said she's just going to take a camera with her and, and share those things that she experiences throughout her day with her Patreon community. And that's either music, art, um, making clothes. I think we all know she's involved in so much stuff and it's super interesting to see. And um, um, this is a glimpse into a Patreon account minus the big bold letters <laughs> on the side. So um, you have a background header, you can even insert a GIF, make it like visually fun, moving, um, you describe what you're doing, and then you can see the different tiers. So um, as I said, start small, three tiers are a perfect way to start. Um, underneath each tier, you have the benefits, I'm going to talk about this in the next slide, but basically that's where you describe all the things you're doing. Um, and then you can insert an about me section. Um, we always um, encourage to do a video because it's always easier to build connections. New people will see your page. So that's really a great way to also talk about why you're doing Patreon, what what are your plans with this, um, maybe w what kind of new project are you going to start that you always wanted to do and now you finally have the resources, the financial resources to do that. And um, yeah, just like any other feed on the internet, you can imagine it, the content will be shown to your patrons and that's, that can be videos, images, written texts, whatever it is you want to include. Yeah, we recommend to not start with more than three, but you're absolutely free to create as many tiers as you like. And it doesn't have to be three. There's a lot of creators who decide just for one tier, and that's also perfectly fine. So it's really highly individual about what is it that you want to do and what is it, what is it that your community wants you to do. And uh, you're free to decide either way. Um, so yeah, let's look at her tears, MIA's tears, and she said she also wants to make this fun and ram random. <laughs> that means um, sh she might do an ASMR Sri Lankan cooking session, or she will stay silent in an ashram for a month and not speak. Um, she also wants to interview interesting people, do some reporting, really see where this takes her and um, I think being a big MIA fan myself, um, having a Q&A session where you can actually ask her questions, it's such a big amazing thing because um, if you're starting out in your craft, in your on your career and having that input from someone that has been in the industry for so long and can really give you those valued 
valuable tips is something um, I would have wished that I had that when I was younger. So um, yeah, this is really about live streaming, it's about exclusive art, it's also unreleased footage, um, things that no one has ever seen before and she's sharing this with the world and also giving patrons early access and um, lets her community know about her projects first. Next, we're going to look at Hazel and Thomas, who are comedians, authors, YouTubers, podcasters, and yeah, they're really one of the most sought um, comedians in Germany. And I think what is uh, great to add here is that they produce a lot of videos, they're also active on YouTube, um, and they have this contact to thousands of young people, and that's also what they want to use on Patreon, because um, it's really about bringing creatives together to network to kind of also push the German comedy scene forward because they don't want to do that comedy where they where we, or a lot of Germans you know they make fun of um, people in their comedy and I want to they want to go away from this and they really want to um, be engaged let people know what they're up to and also make fun of themselves from time to time because um, it's it's not what you see on the internet is not just always um, professional stuff but it can also be yeah, random and um, they really want to shape the future together with their community. And here you see some of the tiers they have, um, again, uh, four levels, they kept it uh, simple and easy for everyone to um, s look at and also make it as easy as possible for the people that come to your Patreon as possible because once people have too much choice, it's really hard for them to decide what they want to do and um, you might lose them on the journey. Yeah, and last but not least, we have Vincent Schwenk. He's a multidisciplinary designer, a 3D artist, and he's really all about tutorials. So um, he wants to share his knowledge with people. He wants to um, really give back to the community and um, have people that started out also uh, yeah, benefit from all of it. And um, his tutorials range from medium to advanced. They're about the fields of design, composition, textures, lightning, um, and um, some of his streams are also on Twitch. And um, I think that's an important point to add that we have a lot of applications you can use from YouTube Live, Vimeo, um, Bonjoro, Crowdcast, and uh, you know, the Patreon can. Um, Kind of, how should I explain this? It's, um, it's part of the ecosystem, right? It's never a standalone thing. It's not just all about Patreon. Patreon is a has a place within your creative uh, activities on other platforms as well. The social media stuff you do, the download platforms, etc. And you know, uh, very commonly people say, "Hey, I don't like to ask for money, etc." Which is a big misconception about Patreon. Uh, you are not supposed to talk about Patreon or to ask for money, all you do is you're talking about all the fun activities that you're doing and that you're also doing on Patreon, which is something you like to talk about because you love it anyway, and that's the way to go about it. So when you think about Patreon, when you think about membership business, don't think about the fact that you're asking for money because really it's essentially exactly the same you've been doing all the time when you have a new record out. You're proudly talking about your new record. When your new book is out, when you're on tour, etc., you talk about that. And that's exactly what you do on Patreon. You don't ask for money. You don't beg for money. You're basically talking about all the cool shit that you're doing on Patreon. Yeah. And um, we have great resources on our website, patreon.com. Please go check it out. We have workshops, blog articles, fun stuff to look at. And also feel free to get in touch with us. Um, that's Berlin minus team at patreon.com. And um, if you want to join us afterwards now for a Q&A session, uh, please feel free to do so. Ronnie and I, we're going to happily answer all your questions and we look forward to that. And um, yeah, thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, it was great being here and um, yeah, hopefully talk soon. Thank you. Thank please you. get in touch. <laughs>